<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a very special episode of Jarred, where we all just die. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't exactly what my topic was on, but <laughs> if you want to go, like, cult leader fashion, we Look, can go Look, Ryan's starting us off. Does he have on the right sneakers, oh my God, though? Have you guys ever seen a dead hamster before? <laughs> 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 oh, oh look, fake be stiff. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny and ironic about that? I saw this. I don't know if it was a Twitter thread or like a subreddit or whatever, but like someone was like, you know, I've never heard a story of a hamster dying a normal death. Yeah, they normally get sucked up the vacuum cleaner. Like they die or- really stupid ways. Like there was this one person who sneezed and his hamster had a heart attack and died. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Why did I laugh? Why did I laugh? I feel terrible. <laughs> it's like if anybody startles me. <laughs> Literally scared him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. One person farted and- too loud and it scared their hamster to death. <laughs> I had a that friend really that. Fart. Holy shit. I had a friend that accidentally killed, I can't remember if it was a hamster or a gerbil, but like, same thing. Their, the, it was the sibling of their friend's pet or whatever. And, um, <clears throat> they, um, they thought that it would be a funny idea to like put it like kind of at her neck, like, I guess trying to get the animal to go down her back and she reacted and she didn't know what it was. And she accidentally like, flung the thing against the wall and i'm like how how traumatizing for for, 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 for to, to know that you did that i just like i flung an animal against a wall and killed it <laughs> why did you yeah, word it like that in defense she didn't know what it was so <laughs> why did you word it like that i flung an animal against a <laughs> i mean i'm you know Calling a spade a spade. That's okay. what the fuck happened. I, I'm laughing. Am I more statistically to become the serial killer here because I'm laughing at that? Like, that's not something I should find funny. I don't know, honey. We both laughed earlier, yeah, so. True, true, true. If you've got a really fucked it's... up hamster story, let us know. <laughs> I think it's just after a while you, you become desensitized to certain things. I think we've all seen enough shit in life to. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, I will let you know that um, I asked my mom to be very nice to you. Because when she called earlier, she let me know that she was on the way home. And I was like, okay, well, text me when you get home. And she's like, oh, I'll just beep as I drive by. And I was like, mom, just please be quiet. Ryan does enough with editing this podcast. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, what the, where are you going with this? Like, <laughs> no, that's where I was going. Right. Okay. Like your mom, like, is she on her way? Like, do I need to, uh, do I need to put it on the spread or something? Like, <laughs> I feel like that's such a non issue at this point. <laughs> Especially since I've moved to this neighborhood, it's like, there's, there's going to be background noise. I would rather it just be a little beep as someone drives by, but you get all the fucking trucks in the background. I'm really, I'm really not that concerned considering, as we discussed last week, we get up midway through and just wander off. Yeah, I don't care. True. That's what I'm saying. Amber should not care. I, I should. Amber, what am I going to do? Amber Amber yell at them, shut the fuck up, I'm recording a podcast. Amber respectfully <laughs> cares. <laughs> Do, respect I respectfully doesn't care no wait I, I was I was trying to prevent a situation I'll do whatever I can to prevent it if I can yeah that, fairly yeah that 
You took the words right out of my mouth, Amber. Maybe I should just stick a note in all my neighbor's mailboxes. Hello, please be respectful on Saturday evenings. I know that you guys have time off of work on the weekends and you would like to have fun and get out there and yee-haw and play loud music and drive your big trucks and your four-wheelers down my street. But yeah, I'm going to be recording a podcast, so if you could just... Yeet, yeet a little, <laughs> little, a little. Yeah, that'd go down well. Yeah, I think that'd start making a lot more noise. <laughs> so yeah, I asked my neighbor today if I could borrow her blow dryer, even though I've never met her in person before. Is that weird? I mean, did she let like, you borrow it? She wasn't home. I mean, uh-huh. well then, yeah, no, it's no, probably no, that's weird. Not really, that's not really weird. I mean, I I went around to my neighbors and asked them to borrow their chainsaw. Legit, this was going back a couple of years ago. We wanted to get rid of the tree in our back garden, and he had he was the only one that had a chainsaw. Yeah, I'm probably gonna message Sarah after this just so we're clear. <laughs> I didn't use it, I wasn't strong. sure. I wasn't strong, enough. sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, mm-hmm. actually, I believe that now. I wonder what would happen if we put Ryan in one of those tree shredders. Just like a, a wood chipper. Gel. That's what it's called. Yeah. I, it would just probably like I, a soft gel would come out. <laughs> I'd just slide through. Aspic. I'd just slide through the... I would just go through the blades. I'm that fucking thin. Because, all right, answer me this. Okay, so going back to the show. You, in the UK, you need a license to operate a chainsaw. Is that the case in the States and Australia? Probably not. Have you met us? They let my husband have a chainsaw. You need a license. Literally, you could go into Walmart and buy a gun. You think you need a license for a chainsaw? (laughs) That would be really weird in the US. Alan easily (laughs) owns 40 chainsaws that he inherited from his grandfather. Well, the reason I... Okay, so... Okay, this is how fucked... One thing I still can't get over. Okay, you can walk into Walmart and buy a a handgun, okay? That's messed up. But yet you won't have certain food food colouring dyes because it causes cancer. That's one thing I will never fucking understand about America. But yeah, you need a license in the UK. Super ironic, considering the shit they shovel into our faces uh-huh. nonstop uh-huh. all day, every day. So yeah, fun fact: you need a license in the UK to uh, handle a chainsaw. Well, weapons make money in America, baby. Yeet yeet. <laughs> yeah, look out where that gets you. <laughs> where does it get us it here? I really don't know. I felt like it felt like a comeback, and I actually had no evidence to back it up. I, I withdraw my last. I comment. hate it here. <laughs> I, I tried. I try to be clever. Let me. Let me feel smart. I just wanted you to say it. Just say it. Where did it get us? Nowhere. Just say it. I don't know. I was trying. I don't. I had no valid point. Okay. This is why I sit in the corner and don't say anything. I'm like a little hamster. No one sneeze. <laughs> I'm on edge. I'm on edge. What the fuck is Amber doing? Well, I mean, we haven't killed him yet when we've scared the shit out of him. So. It's a kitty. It, well, in real life. Come in, close. Ga- in, in game you have. In game you have. Game, yeah. <laughs> not yet reality. There's still time. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> I'm fucking scared. <clears throat> I still push myself laughing over that video. <laughs> Honestly, Where are you gonna go? one of the top ten. One of the top tens. <sighs> anyway. So. What so what do you guys want to do? <laughs> oh, just feel like just kicking back, chilling. Don't want to do much today. We can do that. Mm-hmm. You want me to tell you about a serial killer instead, though? Ooh! Go on, then. Sounds good. <sighs> Maybe. All right, y'all. <sighs> Tonight, I am going to educate you all on Craig Price. Anyone named Craig is fucked. <laughs> Dude, I'm saying... <laughs> How do you look at a baby and go, Craig? Okay. You're going to have a good life. Let's name him Craig. Craig. So you call it Craig. We call them Craig. Mm-hmm. It's Craig. Hey. 
or a, either way it's still fucked up either it's way still it's still like a 43 year old man's name like a man who True. was born 43 years old you don't call a baby <laughs> craig yeah well how do craig you call a baby Price like parent. wayne <laughs> <laughs> wayne is a very bad name Dwayne, any Ain name oh, is just <laughs> Kenny. Oh. I'm 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 polarizing some I'm probably polarizing some listeners. <laughs> you you I think that you might be. Regardless of also, your name, listeners, we are <laughs> Do we know a Kenny? I Alan has an uncle Kenny. I, I don't know any Kennys. Do we know any Kenny? And he had a friend in high school named Kenny. Oh no, I, no I doubt I know I doubt that any of them. Well if are your listening. name is Kenny, fuck you. Oh god. <laughs> oh, speaking of Alan, let me say this before I get too far. Um the day that this episode releases, it will be Alan's thirty second birthday. Happy birthday, Alan. Love you. Happy Thank birthday, you for Alan. the daddy and shit. Love yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um Another year he lives is another year you're not my wife, so I don't celebrate that. <laughs> oh, baby. Damn, that this margarita me. got me feeling funky, guys. Oh, I was like, this is the sweetest thing you've said to me in a while. I'll take it. Are you going to kill him now? <laughs> Would you help? You know what? We should talk about this later when nothing is being recorded. Let's talk about a wood chip. YouTube's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. YouTube? Not Ryan from YouTube. I fucking hate my life. I fucking hate my life. I fucking hate So anyway, this serial killer, Craig. Boom. Yeah, Craig is allegedly U.S.'s youngest serial killer. How young are we talking? Can we guess? We are, t- we are talking that his first kill was when he was 13 years old. What oh, the? Eh. What do you mean? Oh, meh. I would have been more impressed if he was like six. <laughs> I mean, he's already a teen. He's already a teenager. Like, I mean, granted, I was expecting less than ten, but still. 13. Okay, hold on, Jess, Jess, Jess. We should clarify something real quick because you went from not liking the fact that he was a young teenager to being more impressed that if he was a six-year-old. We should like maybe <laughs> tell the audience that you don't prefer six-year-olds or thirteen-year-olds. What? Who was thinking that? I'm just saying it just sounded a lot like that in my head. Nobody there's a lot of things. Been more, there's a lot of things that sound a lot of ways in your head. Six, but <laughs> I'd have been more impressed if he was six. That's what would I you heard. not have been more impressed if he was six? Yeah. I what I'm six in, year old what six year old has the cognitive okay, function look, to okay, serial okay. kill people? Look, 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 on another side of the coin, maybe we shouldn't be impressed that children are Killing. Yeah, we don't condone any of this, by the way, listeners. We don't. No. We don't condone any of this. We've gone so off track. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is a banger. <laughs> I'm just saying. Imagine being a six year old serial killer, and then like you don't even remember it. Bro. I literally. I, I remember like three. I think everyone should old. take care of their mental health. You know. That's all I'm saying. It did it as well to good, didn't it? Except for the Craigs. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Craig growing up as a kid, um, he was kind of, he kind of always had like a juvenile record. Um, like, he participate in a lot of crimes like breaking and entering uh robbing stalking drug use um assault and like most of these crimes he was committing like with his family members like he wasn't exactly born into a good home like i feel like from what i've gathered all that he's known from the time that he was young to the time that he was committing these murders all he's known is a life of crime um, so Price or the, Craig claimed that his first victim 
which is a a not great case. I'll go into detail. Okay, so he claimed his first victim July 27th in 1987 um, as he was at the age of 13. From what he testified to, he was basically peeping on uh, his neighbor, 27-year-old Rebecca Spencer. And he ended up breaking into her house, going into her kitchen, taking one of her kitchen knives and stabbing her 58 times. Damn, is this little motherfucker Michael Myers? And he claimed that he had done this while high on LSD. Uh, 30, okay, uh, okay. Uh, now I'm more impressed with the fact that he's 13. That's impressive. LSD, breaking and entering, and then stabbing somebody 58 times? 58 times. First of all, uh. in the true crime realm, stabbing is a very personal yeah. method. Second of all, to stab someone that many times. You gotta have a lot of anger. That's personal. Personal. Yeah. Did he have a history with that person? Not that was ever found. Not that I could ever find. But I do know that, like I said, he peeped on her. So I don't know if, like, maybe this is a recurring um thing that happened and maybe she had caught him before maybe she tried to talk to him because he was a young kid and you know maybe she was trying to be understanding and saying look i know you're young and you're curious but you can't do this and you know maybe this was the one too many times that she caught him and he was scared i i I don't know maybe she rejected him at one point that's what i was thinking that's a pretty common theme yes with men kenny (laughs) okay so at the time of this murder because of how it happened and the fact that detectives had like no leads this case went cold for two years and at the time um that made that crime known as the warwick slasher for one person? For one person. I guess because it would be from my understanding, they had brought in, um, I guess because of the brutality of the crime. Yeah. Um, and you'll see again later whenever I get into his next bit of crimes, they do end up bringing up an FBI uh, profiler. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so the profile profiler basically said, yeah, no, this is this is definitely a serial killer. Who was the profiler? Um, that information I did not get. Damn, I was hoping it was my profiler from my last episode. How cool would that be? That would be cool. Okay. So, two years later, he breaks into another neighbor's house. This time, it being the Heaton family. And he broke into it with the just the sole intention of just mugging the place. Like he wasn't peeping on anybody. He wasn't, you know, he was just straight up. I'm, I'm, I'm here to rob and get my shit and go. Um, as he's robbing this house again, neighbor, not very far from his first murder. Um, he encounters mother of the home, um, Joan Heaton. He, Starts trying to beat and strangle her, um, but she's making noises. She's fighting back. And so then he decides to go into the kitchen, grab a knife, and start stabbing her. In the meantime, her screams and all of her panicking has woken her two daughters, Jennifer and Melissa. Not only did he end up stabbing both the daughters um one of the daughters i'm trying to find melissa yeah it was melissa um he had actually crushed her skull with a kitchen stool holy shit 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I told you it wasn't fun. I'm just going to drink this real quick. To do to do that, like, uh, this is gonna sound this is gonna sound real misconstrued. St stabbing yeah. somebody, I can understand into some into some respects, you know, obviously in a crime aspect, but physically crushing and caving in somebody's skull with a kitchen uh, stool with anything. Oh, and I did forget to mention this. Joan was 39, Jennifer 10, and the daughter whose skull was crushed, she was eight years old. That makes it even worse. It's just, it, it's just a whole, it's just a whole other level. It's just, for me, that is just on a completely different level. Even just, even just to, yeah, I can go, I can go on a spiral there. I'll let you, I'll let you continue. Yeah, it's not this, this again, not the happiest one that I've read about, especially considering how young that he was. But from what I've read, he just he did not go up. He did not grow up in a in an yeah. in an environment yeah. that didn't and, encourage some type of behavior. You know what I'm saying? And, th and this in this crime that you that you're now describing, as you said, this was two months after his first one. No, no, no. Two this years. was two two years right okay okay so right. Okay, so he commits the first crime at 13 and then now he's murdered these three people and he's 15 years old Jesus. All right, okay. okay so now after this string of this whole family being slaughtered um the fbi gets called in because of the nature of the crimes and the fact that they mm -hmm. were so close together and the fact that everyone had kind of suffered similar injuries um that's when they called in the fbi to come in and do a profile um the pretty much the only thing that the fbi profiler was like hey yeah there's similarities and we do think this is the same person that's committed these crimes and we think that it's someone that's local to the area but that was about all the information that the fbi profilers could give a detective <clears throat> on the case of the family with the, the mother and the two daughters, he happened to notice that, and I don't know how he came in contact with Craig. I don't know how he met and saw his hand, but it was determined at the crime scene that whoever had committed these crimes had sustained an injury. And he just so happened to catch the fact that Craig had a injury on his hand, that he had a visible cut. It's kind of badass um, spot, so, spotting somebody like that. That's kind of badass doing it that yeah. way. <laughs> So on September 5th, 1989, um, two police detectives interrogated Price um, after they noticed the cut on his hand, which Price tried to excuse as an unrelated injury he suffered while drunk. Um, after failing a lie detector test, a search warrant was requested and in his house, police found bloody knives and clothing. He was subsequently interrogated about the murders and he quickly confessed to the crimes without remorse even mimicking the dying sounds of the girls that he had killed. Mm. So I'm just going to take another little <laughs> shot of whiskey. <clears throat> uh, because of his age, Price couldn't face trial or be imprisoned in accordance with the Rhode Island law. As a result, he was sent to a juvenile correction institution called the Rhode Island Training School. He was placed in the school's maximum security ring wing, um, the Youth Correctional Center, uh, where he was to be held for five years, ending on his 21st birthday. Um, and this came at a time where the people of Rhode Island, like by the time they could turn 21, they were like, nah. We don't want that dude back here. Fucking. Mm. They got they got the attention of Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time. And um, they were able to extend his stay for a little bit. Um, and, it, and at that point, um, he was now facing a sentence of 
uh, assault and extortion after he had just threatened the life of a correctional officer at that facility that he was at. Um, as I was reading this, I was like, okay, some of the information that I found on Craig, it was like, okay, he's going to be released in like 2017, 2016. So I'm trying to like get all this information together because I'm like, okay, maybe he has a new life now and I can tell y'all all about that. No. Mm -hmm. So the entire time that Craig has been in jail, and this is from what I've gathered Man just keeps doing everything that he can to stay in the system. Right. It, it could be because maybe that's the only life he's ever known. I could understand that. But he has gotten into fight after fight with prison mate after prison mate. Even at one time stabbing <laughs> um, some prison mates with a five inch handmade shank jesus how would you make a i mean honestly shank? if you think about it like he had a terrible home life he had a very yep. just rough childhood and then it's like you get in this place and yeah it sucks because you're not free but at the same time you're getting three meals a day yeah, you've got a bed to yeah. sleep in you got a roof over your head yeah. and you got clothes yeah mm. what else do you need People if he go. knows that he's going to be leaving that place to go like you know Whoever the fuck knows. To nothing. He, he doesn't know. Yeah. Not sure where you're going to live or where your next meal is going to come from. Then I was gonna why say, not get in some more trouble and prolong your stay? I was going to say. It's yeah. No, I completely freedom. understand that. It's got, like I said, if that's the life, if that's the only life he's ever known, I can imagine the fact that the thought of getting out. He probably found some sort of being, weird comfort in that, like, yeah. in yeah. that certainty of being in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you think about it. Like you just said, you've got your three meals a day. You know where you're going to sleep. You know where you're waking up. If you're let out to be free and you don't know how to be free, mm -hmm. I mean, what what option is there for you? Where are you going to go if you don't have any contacts at your nearest wherever you're released at? Like, and you're not going to be able to get a job, really. No. Oh, hell no. <laughs> wow. So... So, from what I've gathered, he could have been released some while ago, um, but he's just been stabbing and fighting people and not, not really trying to help himself come home, even though... Another place I read is that while he was at the juvenile correction fa correctional facility, he was able to get his GED online. And he was able to, like, coach some type of classes while he was there. Like, he wasn't not a model, you He know. contributed. Yeah. yeah, he contributed while he was at the juvenile facility. As soon as he gets to jail, I, I don't know if, like, a light f just switched or what. So, the last... Stabbing that I was talking about was against a fellow inmate, Joshua Davis, at the Suwanee Correctional Institution in Live Oak, Florida, with a five-inch uh, homemade knife. And for that, he was sentenced on January 18th, 2019, to 25 years for that crime alone. I mean, he's just secure in the bag, proverbially. That's what uh, he's doing. I, I assume he killed the inmate, yeah. didn't just injure him. I don't think he killed them. Oh shit! I didn't see any. I didn't see anywhere where the the individual actually died. To uh, be quite honest with you, now I could be wrong and I just didn't mm -hmm. find it. But from what I looked at, I never found it. By the way, my sources are uh, Wikipedia, uh, or I'm not not Wikipedia, Murderpedia, and CriminalMinds.Fandom.com. Um. <clears throat> I mean, regardless, he shouldn't have. It, there shouldn't have been a possibility, in my opinion, of him getting released. Yeah. Oh God, no! Regardless. Especially if it's not like he was it, six years old and killed these people. No, 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 no. He was thirteen he and fifteen. Much less impressive. With how brutal that last one, yeah. the family was. Yeah. yeah, I don't like. 
It's just like, I don't remember the name of that kid, but it's all over the news recently. The kid that just got out of prison after, like, he, or juvenile, what, I don't know. But he killed, like, a four-year-old when he was, like, 13 or something. Like, it was kind of, mm. like, kind of a brutal Ooh. situation. And he's just recently Oh, that redhead kid? As a, yes. Oh, God. Yeah, he's just been yeah, released I don't as an adult. And everyone's all. like, what? Like, he was yeah, old enough trust to that know better. All. And he's still brutally murdered a four-year-old i don't trust and that he shit just at all. got out of prison okay so real quick i'm just gonna list you off all of craig price's history so before his first murder you know i discussed that he participated in a lot of breaking and enterings and robberies, stalkings drug group drug use assault um, then he stabs his first and kills his first victim, Rebecca Spencer, in uh, July of 1987. Then in September of 1989 is when he slaughters the Heaton family. Um, February of 96, he um, assaults um, two um, unarmed. Uh, one was an inmate and one was a prison guard. Another thing I should have mentioned about the Heaton family, and I forgot to. I'm sorry. Joan, Jennifer, and Melissa. All three. All three were also bitten. The daughters he bit in the face, I'm not quite sure where he bit Joan. But Damn. both the daughters were bitten in the face. Ted Bundy style. Yeah, like, I don't think that this good, this guy is, like, a good person, like, at all. I don't think he can be re rehabilitated, like, no, nah, this man need to stay locked He's not up. good, and he's also not smart. Because what did we no. the Ted Bundy trial where he had bite marks on that girl's butt? They matched <sighs> his dental impressions to the bite mark. Then go around um, biting people. Right? Just don't do it. I mean, I'll if you're gonna, if you're gonna... <laughs> If you're going to go around doing this stuff, I mean, never mind. Yeah, don't finish that because I was about to put up a warning. We don't condone any of this behavior. No, I was about to just If you do that kind of identifying stuff and think you're going to get away with it, that's all. Like, yeah. you're not going to get away with it. October of 98, he assaulted a unarmed prison guard. In February of 99, he also assaulted another unarmed prison guard. In 2001, he also assaulted another unarmed prison guard. Yeah, he's just trying to stay in there. Yeah, yeah he's trying to stay in there at this point. And then in July of 2009, he assaults an unarmed inmate and then attempts to uh, fatally shank a uh, unarmed prison guard. And then... In 2017 is where he attempts to stab Joshua Davis, which we all know now. He was sentenced to 25 years in 2019 for that crime. Which in America means he'll serve one year and then get probation. Yeah, I was just about to say. Now, how, how, what does that translate to? <laughs> oh, there's overcrowding at the prison. Oh, you've been a really good prisoner. Goodbye. <laughs> but... As of recent, that is the complete and total crime rap sheet on Mr. Craig Price. I, again, it's always a fucking Craig. I, 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 again, it's always a fucking Craig. Again, though, low profile in quotes my ass. Like, that's <laughs> literally brutal. It's so heinous. 58 times st stabbing one victim. Yeah. Stabbing three more others, biting them, crushing the one of their skulls. Like that's the that thing is, shit you thought you'd have heard about more. You know, I mean, so yes, it was when this kind of first. stuff happens so frequently, and it was happening even more frequently in the seventies yeah. and eighties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like all of these people coming out will not. And I think you know, his birthday was things, like, but. yeah, and I think his birthday is in like seventy eight. Hold on. Uh, did it at birth? Oh, I'm sorry. His birth date is uh, October 11th, 1973. Oh, crap. So he's like, what, 40? Dougie? No. Is it Dougie? Is Dougie the killer? Dougie, <laughs> babe, babe. What was, what, what was his birth date again? You said October what? Was what was the year? 73, October baby. 11th, 1973. 
It's not me. Sam? <laughs> that is my birthday. I know, Bam. that's what I'm like. It's exact my birthday. <laughs> Babe, do you have... Holy crap. Baby, do you have a a life I don't know about? You want you want to talk about it? Well, it'd be a life I don't know about either. So, <laughs> okay, I just want to check. I'm of course, gonna... Amber picks a killer with Dougie's birthday. Get the fuck out of here! Y'all think that's the coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad those three is still safe. That's all good. He's not, he's not snapped yet. Um, but yeah, like and the I've 70s never been to the U.S. So <laughs> that we know not of. yet. But yes, He'll come to see us. People do this kind of shit all the time, but there has to be that one spark that sets it apart from all the rest of them. There has to be, yeah. you know, something, I hate to say it, but special to set it alight all yeah. across the country, all across the world. Yeah. I mean, what he did, as shitty as it is to say, I mean, so many people do that kind of shit. There was nothing special about him. Yeah. No, 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 no. That makes sense. Um. Honestly, to me, what what intrigued me most about this, like reading about this, him, is how he's been since being incarcerated in whatever shape or fashion. Because when he was in the juvenile system, like he actually was kind of thriving. He got his education. He was, you know. But then, as soon as we impose these charges for him to go to prison that's when the decline starts you know outside of rehabilitation not that i feel like he could have been rehabilitatable that's a big but word. it's just the whole it's just <laughs> too big oh, for honey me. oh honey i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that to you <laughs> i had a lot of syllables in i'm sorry <laughs> honey blow the smoke off your ears i'm so sorry <laughs> But, you know, it to me, that di- that dynamic is what's interesting to me. It's like, what the fuck? Like, as soon as he got to prison, what convinced him at prison that there was no way of getting out? I don't I don't think I mean. I don't think it was like a no light at the end of the tunnel for him. I think sure. it was probably that when he was in the juvenile part and he actually got his shit together, he's like, wow, I'm actually being a productive member of society yeah. behind the bar or behind these bars here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay here. And then he gets sent to prison and is like, shit, they're going to release me. Like, I don't know what the only time I've ever thrived is while he's being in it. here. Right. Right. So. And I mean, if he stabbed that one guy, then that tells me right there he could have probably had the opportunity to kill other people. But you're saying he oh, assaulted absolutely. people for all right. those years up until then. So it's not like yes, just because yes. you assault someone doesn't mean you like stab them. It they, you could just punch them in the face and that's assault. You could slap them in the face and that's assault. Oh, Willie. So yeah, anything to tack on those years because he probably really didn't know what he would do. Outside of that's the I only mean, time truly, he actually because did anything people, kind of good. Right, because I mean he's grown up in this family that's been, you know, less than um uh, ideal. And so I mean that's just kind of the lifestyle that he's used to. And if he's like, Okay, well this is better than what the fuck I'm going home to it all why goes back stay? to something. It always fucking goes back to something. Always stems from something. You bring any hand? That's why I'm so obsessed with like serial killer psychology because I like I always want to know what like what their brain is like because like whenever you mention you know a major murderer mm-hmm. like Chris Watts or Ted Bundy or Dahmer or whoever like people who don't think the same way are just quick to be like oh they were just evil that was the devil right there like just like. And I feel like that just writes off the psychology side of it. Like, it's so easy to say that someone did something just because they're evil. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, and maybe it's because of the many years that I've been in therapy now. Shout out to Miss Kim, my therapist, whose birthday is on Monday. Whenever this episode releases, happy birthday, Miss Kim. Anyway, like when she talks to me about certain things that she's experienced and 
certain people that she's dealt with and stuff. Cause I mean, she knows that all of this just fucking fascinates me. Mm-hmm. She un- like, she knows that we do a podcast that's, you know, basically whatever. And like when I told her that we were doing serial killers, she was like, Oh, that's so good for you because you can tackle on to the things that you're scared of. But she's talked to me even about, you know, courts without violating HIPAA. Um, some of the patients that she's had to deal with that she's like, some of them, yes, I feel like I can talk to and her rehabilitate. Other ones, I won't talk to. I would say, I, in my, I mean, I'm not a professional, but in my opinion, I would think that like a single murder, maybe double murder, stretching it, maybe, I don't know. Oh, that's a double homicide. Anyway, um, I think they had, they could possibly be rehabilitated maybe but when it comes to serial murderers or killers i don't think so that i mean that's right. that's way that's just too much maybe that's why the cap is three because it's just <laughs> like the one and two yeah well i mean i'm I don't sure think... that might be why the cap is three because you think about it if you watch one person like if i kill someone and i'm watching their life leave their body One time. Okay. Two times. Okay. If I'm willing to do it three and four times. Multiple times. It's like you're getting a kick out of it almost. But yeah, it's it's like you're too far gone. Yeah. Very too far gone. I I don't think that serial killers should be tossed in prison to rot for the rest of their lives. I think that they should be used to science to some extent. Mental science anyway. I think that they should be studied. I mean, they do it for, you know, people that suffer from CTE, so why not? I mean, turn them into lab rats, basically. Yeah. Like, mm. at least make their existence somewhat useful. Proactive, Beneficial. Yeah, proactive of sorts. Which, I mean, and this is to also say... That's Test makeup on learned. them, not animals. <laughs> <laughs> this is to also say we have learned within the years that a lot of... You know, people that go on to do very violent, heinous crimes, a lot of them have had some type of head trauma. Oh, my God. I'm so worried about my That's son's noggin now. That's such a common denominator. Like, every time you, like, look at someone who's killed someone, it's like, oh, he had an accident when he was four where he fell off a swing and hit his head and had a concussion. It's so common. <sighs> I'm worried about the fall I had when I was two. You're not smart I enough am to too. Actually, oh. actually, you might be smart enough to kill someone, but then you would bite head. them. I've got a scar here where a car dropped on my head. I've got a scar here where I hit myself in a bit of pipe. Yeah. Dougie, Dougie, you love me entirely too much to be a killer. I'm just We're not, not saying that everyone with head trauma becomes a killer. We're yeah. saying that head trauma <laughs> Every- likens the chances or it increases the chances of someone being. All of our listeners now are going to be. That's a very big common denominator. All of our listeners now right. are just going to be check, going through their like, medical history. Like, wait, when did I hit my head? When did I hit my head? Just, <laughs> just like those athletes, like Aaron Hernandez and uh, Chris Benoit, who like murdered people. Oh, they oh. had the. They had the brain damage from taking so many hits because, like, Aaron Hernandez, what he was football, and then Chris Benoit was, like, wrestling or something or something like yes, that. Yes, Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit was a rough ben run for me. Yeah, Benoit. Benoit. <laughs> but, no, Chris yeah, Benoit was a rough stuff. one for me going. Yeah, the CTE. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Wow. Well. Mm. Well, well, did I? In- I mean, no, he's, he's not nothing, thinking about anything not a ever. Behind those eyes, what are you doing? You're like he's not thinking about anything ever at any point in time. That's what's wrong. Ryan with was him. posing for a sculpture. He looks pensive. Are you talking about me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what other Ryan? I didn't hear oh you say my, my name. I didn't hear you say my name. I thought you were just chatting about somebody. I didn't. <laughs> anyway, boys. Did I entertain you this week? Yes, you did. I'm scarred, but yes. Yeah, sorry about some of that shit. Mm. I'm glad you took me back to my core memory of watching Halloween for the first time when I was seven years old. 
Oh, that's what oh. I thought of with the first murder. When baby Michael Myers was dressed up as the clown and he killed his sister. Oh. Or was okay. it his sister or was it his babysitter? Either way, it was a young girl, oh. a teenager. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry I did that for you. I love thinking about Michael Myers at all times. It's no big deal. <laughs> so. Yeah, now I just feel weird about all this. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a segue for that. Michael Myers is daddy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't um, know. Make sure that you, you know follow like, us on. You know he's like six foot six. Canonically. Make sure you follow us on all social <laughs> medias. And if you would like to consider being a Patreon member, uh, we do exclusive special bonus episodes every month. You get early access. Um, I don't know what the fuck else. You get discount codes off of our merch. Discount codes. Google us. Um, anyway, Google. so Michael Myers is actually set six foot seven oh, canonically. So Michael anyway. <laughs> Majardpodcast.com. <laughs> Jess is going to go <laughs> jerk off now. <laughs> I got I to gotta go put on my Michael mask and rub one out. <laughs> I love y'all. That was Craig Price. <laughs> Fuck all Craigs. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Uh, bye. 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 bye.